Last July, in his letter accompanying Tradiciones Custodas, Pope Francis declared his intention to eradicate the traditional liturgy. He impossibly claimed the Novus Ordo constitutes the unique expression of the Lex Orandi of the Roman Rite. It is important to withstand the Pope on this publicly. One reason is to save his soul. King Herod was not a Christian when he wanted the infant Jesus put to death, and now shall the Pope put Christ to death. Caiaphas was high priest of the Old Covenant when he arranged for Jesus' execution. Now shall the Vicar of Christ try to have Christ's memorial destroyed. The Cardinals are officially friends of the Pope. We can hope some of them have remonstrated quietly with him as Jesus instructed, and if he listens to you, you will have regained your brother. But as Francis has not backed away from this sacrilege, the passage continues, if he will not listen to you, invite one or two more, and if he will not listen to them, tell the church. Why does Jesus say one must go public to the church? Countless Catholics are wounded by this beating from the Pope, priests and faithful who are devastated by it, and also of those many Catholics who have been kept in the dark about the hierarchy's long attack on tradition. Because this didn't begin with Francis. Maybe one good that can come from this is people, as they are in fact, wake up to tradition. Just before those verses from Matthew 18, Jesus said, whoever will have led astray one of these little ones who trusts in me, it will be better for him to have a great millstone hung around his neck and to be submerged in the depths of the sea. Do not despise even one of these little ones. What is it then, not just one, but when tens of thousands are being pushed out by the shepherds? Jesus warned against causing scandal. So another reason to go public is for all those who know about this attack on tradition and who care about it, don't think that you are crazy. Don't be gaslighted. What is happening is evil beyond description. Sit back and consider it. The highest power on earth is attacking the greatest good on earth, precisely when it's his job to defend and preserve tradition and to pass it on to the next generation. Archbishop Roche, in this interview, where almost every sentence he spoke was untrue or misleading, says... The negative reaction to traditionalist custodians has been very little. Well, Archbishop, what do you expect when a reign of terror is unleashed? Of course people are keeping their heads down. Many clerics do not say openly what they think because they're afraid of vicious reprisals. They're afraid of confirmations being banned or baptisms being banned in the old rite or told they can no longer celebrate the old mass. As is happening, the carnage has begun. Truth is needed for spiritual health. Without truth, we starve. It's not enough to know it in our hearts. We need to hear it said by men in authority from bishops and cardinals that nobody has the right to attack tradition. But also for those Catholics who don't know what's happening here because they don't care, because they don't come to Mass anymore anyway. For 70 years they've been robbed. We might not understand if we simply think the Pope is attacking the old Mass. The fact is the Pope is attacking God's revelation. That should matter to everybody. To reject tradition is to reject Christ. We know that it would be evil to change the scriptures. St. John warns, if any man shall take away from the words of the book, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. And St. Paul warns against, though we or an angel from heaven preach a gospel to you beside that which we have preached to you, let him be anathema. The truth of Christ comes through both scripture and tradition. And just as it's evil to doctor or corrupt the scriptures, so it is to obstruct tradition. The received rites may not be condemned. They're received in order to be guarded, defended, celebrated and passed on to the next generation all through to the end of time. The prophet Isaiah spoke to us, O oh, my people, your leaders mislead you. The Lord enters into judgment with the elders and princes of his people. What do you mean by crushing my people? By grinding the face of the poor, says the Lord God of hosts. The prophet is confronting the leaders and princes who have devoured the vineyard, who are crushing God's people. He's speaking to the hierarchy of today. And Jesus as well, with such clarity, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you close the kingdom of heaven before men. For you yourselves do not enter, and those who are entering you would not permit to enter. You may personally hate the old mass, but you can see that Christians love it. They love to encounter Christ there. They pray there more deeply than anywhere. Why would you take this away? 
St. Paul says about the various gifts, he who governs in solicitude, that means he who rules in carefulness for those under him. And yet we see this abuse of a spiritual father trying to devastate those who hold on to tradition. And a third reason for going public, more important than for the suffering of our own generation, is for the future, so that we do not have another destroyer following Francis. In recent years, it's been suggested, however unrealistic it seems now, that the next pope might be Cardinal Parolin or Tagli. Would things be different under any of them? Because this didn't begin with Francis. It's been going on for 70 years, this attack on tradition. And there are plenty in the Curia, in the chantries of the world, who will keep this destruction going if they find another to lead them there. Men like Cardinal Supic, he wants no truce on Christmas Day. He is willing for the war and the slaughter to continue. Of all the days of the year, he chose Christmas Day to drop the axe. Who does that? Is that not sick? All the blogs restrain themselves on the great feasts. They put the focus wholly on Christ or they go silent. But not Cardinal Supic, who wants no peace of Christ at Christmas, but slaughter is like another Herod. And Archbishop Roche said the vast majority of bishops of the world are very much behind what the Holy Father is saying. That's unbelievable from the reactions of the vast majority of bishops in the world. But this is precisely, bishops, why we need to hear in public what the truth is. Otherwise, the propaganda from Archbishop Roche will stand. And it's so depressing to think that the shepherds can't find it in them to defend Christ and to defend the flock and to defend the faithful and to defend tradition. Why do we go public? Luke described how the chief priests and the scribes and the ancients were afraid to answer Jesus' question about St. John the Baptist, but they didn't dare to tell the lie. They said, if we say of men, the whole people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. The people then would not tolerate BS from their religious leaders. Neither should we, because we know where it leads when eventually they were manipulated into following their corrupt leaders to the death of Christ. Christ rises, but we don't want to crucify him again. The church must be herself, needs to return to tradition. Restore us to thyself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old. One good thing that might come from all this is that if all of us learn that there is nobody on earth, no prime minister, no president, no bishop, no cardinal, no pope, no one has the authority to close all the churches or to try to ban the traditional mass because the Antichrist will want to do that. And what's going to happen if we're so stupid that we say, oh, well, this leader has said it, so we have to do it. No, we need to be immunized now against this folly. We have the sources of our faith, the scripture and tradition. The Pope's job is to preserve that, not to be a source of revelation in himself, not to set a new direction for the church. The direction for the, the church has been given by Jesus Christ. Set. And since and Peter and Paul the and the apostles took it in that direction, and so for nearly 2,000 years it's been held, this is no time for anybody to try to set a new direction for the church. The, the Antichrist try that in his time, but we need to learn now that it's impossible so that those who wish to be faithful, who wish to cleave to Christ, may do so. God bless you all.